Jackson to do our opening prayer at this time. Hallelujah. Sister Eileen Jackson, her husband just corrected me. A pleasant good morning to everyone. Let us all bow. Father God, I want to thank you, God, for bringing us here safely, God. Father God, we worship and exalt your name because, God, there is none like unto you. There is none to compare to you this morning, oh God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor, oh God, that is due unto you, oh mighty God. Father God, I lift up the worshipers before you, God, as they sing, oh God. They sing joyful unto you, giving you all the praise that is that you deserve this morning, oh God. You are worthy to be exalted, dear mighty God. Father God, even the musician, oh God, as they play, oh God, I pray, oh God, that they, that they be played so skillfully, oh God, that some hearts, oh God, some soul will receive your blessing this morning, oh mighty God. Father God, continue to bless them, oh God, even their families, oh God, touch them, oh God, in a special way, oh God. Father God, the word, oh God, that is about to bring forth this morning, oh God. I pray, oh God, that our life, oh God, that our life will be take, will take heed, oh God, this morning, oh God. 
Father God, we thank you, God. Lord, we lift up your name because there is none like unto you, mighty God. Father God, thank you. I thank you, God, for what you have done, oh God. Father God, each of and every one of us this morning, oh God, some of us may be feeling sick in our bodies, oh God. We may be feeling dung, oh God. Father, we clearly strength this morning, oh mighty God. Father God, you said, oh God, whatever we need, oh God, we must ask, oh God, have faith and believe, oh God, and it shall be done. So, Father God, I'm asking you, God, for a healing touch on each and every one this morning, oh God. Father God, even myself, oh God, I'm not well. But God, I stand here believing you for a miracle, mighty God. You know my heart, God. And God, I thank you. Thank you, God, for this coming true for me, oh God. Father God. I leave everything into your hands this morning. God, let's continue to be with each and every one of us, oh God. Guide and protect us, oh God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I know, I, was, I just want to say something. For the past... Because it's 10 or 15 years, I have been struggling with a problem. My husband and me know. I gave my husband Okay, here's my support. Um... I was an RN, right? I passed. I got rated, but I was unsuccessful in my license examination. However, I was so dumb. I started to feel like giving up on everything. I don't want to eat nothing. I just feel like giving up. My husband, he prayed for me. Many times he said, babes, don't worry. God will see you through. And I keep saying it, it taken so long, whole 15 years, I have to wait for something to come true. And it take me 15 years to get my dream. And today I stand here, I'm a registered staff nurse. And I worked in the intensive care unit. And for my past in the intensive care unit, I love it so much. And that is just the step that is just a little thing. I'm not staying there. I am aiming for higher heights in Jesus. And this is just to say that no matter what you're going through in life, you have to just have faith, trust God, because when you think it is over, God has something in store for you. No matter what you are going through, God is in control. Faith, that word faith, when you don't have faith here, you must have faith and God will see you through. You see your tides, brothers and sisters, may I tell you, through your tides, it is very important. Don't take it away from God. Through your tides. No matter what letter you have, if you don't have anything and there's a last money, throw your tithes. You will see return. You will see blessing. God is blessing me, my husband, and my two beautiful daughters. I can stand and say, God is good. I come from nothing to something. And he is going to transfer us to somebody. I want to give God praise. Give him thanks for what he has done. Thank you. God, you, you may have your seats. God is indeed good. And Sister J Jackson has already started this celebration. So, all those who are celebrating birthdays from now until Saturday, if you're celebrating, so we have the Craigs. 
We have two sisters, the Craigs. We have, when, when you're celebrating, Wednesday, you all are twins? <laughs> wow. Amen. That's awesome. So, there's one big celebration. All right. Sister Williams? Edward, sorry. Friday. Stay in the back. Yesterday, okay. And sister, Sister Jackson, Wednesday. So plenty of people are selling. You are linking up on Wednesday. And there's one more in the back, brother. Today. Woo. Celebrating. And we want to, and all those who are celebrating life. Amen. What about anniversaries? Anybody celebrating anniversaries? All right. Everybody was too busy with Good Friday and thinking about how Jesus has really saved us. So nobody was thinking about getting married. And all our visitors, yes, I see in my family down there, um, Sister Nell Richardson. So we're happy to have you. Anybody else who is visiting? All right, so let us just worship Jesus because today is Resurrection Sunday. And according to Romans 6, 9, it says that, you know, Jesus died, but he has overcome death. And because he has overcome death, he is alive. And because he is alive, we are alive. Amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet and give God some praise. Try to tell me God is dead. He woke me up this morning. Don't try to tell me He's not alive. He lives within my heart. He opened up. He opened.
Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Come on, lift it up, say. My great father, we thank you for a morning like this, Lord. Lord, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you honor. We lift up your mighty 
and wonderful name. Lord, it's a joy and a pleasure to be here in your house, God. It's excitement, in, in, in high quality of excitement, Lord, of what your son has done for us. So, Lord, as we prepare ourselves to give to you, O oh God, Father, help us to remember force. You have given us your best gift. Your son. Lord, when we were no good at all, you had us to sit back and look at your son. Go through a chastisement. Go through, Lord, a great... Oh, I, I don't even know what to say. But he go through, Lord, to redeem us from the cause of the law. What a gift. What a gift. And Lord... As I was speaking to you last night, you told me the things that we don't do. We don't value it. And you show me what valuation is all about. Lord, when we want to, 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 to sell our property, when we want to sell our land, we bring in a valuator. And Lord, sometimes we look at the, the property and the land as nothing. But when the valuator valued it and gave us the, 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 the price and say, man, watch your land. Your land is valuable, you, you know. Father, we pray this morning, God, as we are about to give. Lord, we will, we will really look at the gift that you give to us. It's the best thing I'll ever see. It doesn't have anything on earth, Lord, could replace that. It doesn't have anything on earth, God, could be like that. I've been in the world playing some fool and doing some doorishness. And God, what I received was domination. What I get from the devil was to go in hell. But after accepting you, Lord... Oh God, Lord, and began to drive after you. I see how much valuable you are to us, oh God. So as we prepare to give this morning, we pray that we will give generously. Lord, we pray that we will not take you for granted. Lord, we pray, oh God, Father, as we look at you and the great things you have done for us, Lord, we pray, oh God, that we would be, oh God, be gratitude. We would, oh God, Father, stand out first and foremost for you. We pray, oh God, when we get our salary. Lord, the first thing we will do, take the envelope from the bus. Take out yours. Put it back in the envelope. And hand the rest to Daddy. I put yours on there. Help me now with this. Help me now with this, Lord. <laughs> I tell you, you could, never go, you could never go wrong in that way. And Father, help us to develop that attitude, a highly respect for you and your things, a great respect for you, a great honor. Help us to be competent in what we do for you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you told me anything I have to do for you. Get the early. Get the early. Get the early and set the atmosphere. Get early. Don't care who did it. Don't care who. Get early and set the atmosphere. Respecting you. Respecting you highly. Honoring you highly, Lord. So this morning we pray, God, that we will honor you with our gift. Our motive towards you will be right, oh God. We will develop a hunger and thirst after giving. Lord, because I understand if we give a cup of cold water, in the name of Jesus, we love churches in heaven. So Lord, when we sacrifice the bill, when we sacrifice our children to go to school, yes, the money that I have, I don't even enough. But, oh God, help me with it and help look yours. <laughs> you wouldn't know where the money coming from. You would not know where the money coming from. God would favor men to put into your pocket, press down, and running over. Good measure. So, Father, this morning, oh God, I pray for everyone that would give this morning. I pray a special blessing this morning. For those who do not have a job, Lord, I pray, God, that by this week, by this week, I prophesy by this week, that person will get a job. I prophesy by this week, somebody's salary will be raised. I prophesy by this week, Lord, we will come back here and testify about the goodness of God. You are great, nice, and wonderful. Great, nice, and wonderful. You know, I want to testify about the goodness of God. You know, when I, I'm one of the men who does not like to come to church without a cent in my pocket. I feel bad. If I sit down there and the, 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 the paid offering bucket pass across and I don't get a dollar, I feel bad. I feel bad. So I always got a little something. 
Well, sometimes things could go different than how you want it, but you always want to give to God. And I went to the real board church. And I didn't know that they would have picked up an offering. So I had spent some money that I got to spend it out and do some stuff. So I kept back a $50. I said, this is going to keep me out of the week. Because I am not one of the guys when a lady come home with she basket and so on. And run in and go and say, I want something. No, I drink a good breakfast home and I walk with my lunch. You know? So I said, this is going to keep me. And when they came around with the offering slip, I take out the $50. It's the only thing I have. I didn't have none home. I couldn't go to the bank or something, you know. And I don't like Barry. I don't borrow from nobody. If I want something, I borrow from my children and them. I don't borrow from a man at all. And I gave $50. I said, Dad, this is all I got to you. I don't know how coming home. I do pay two van. One from me and I do pay another van. I don't know. But I did it. God didn't want you to bring back a $20. And the morning when I thinking about, okay, I'm going to call my son or call Doreen because he go up in my Sunday sometime and he had his birthday. I saw Glaston came down. He picked me up and he dropped me right on the spot. In the evening, I saw Edwards came, who coming in from work and he picked me up and dropped me right at my gate. Two days after $400 was presented to me. Is that God good? What a God we serve. And that come from giving. You know? That come from giving. And watch. Up to yesterday. You know, I had some land to walk down. I don't want to be land, but I got to share this. I want young people to get this. And I, I choose for myself a guy, two guys, because they always work with me. They don't give me the best, but I choose them to work with me. And in Friday afternoon, I understand, you know, I got a witness that they wouldn't come. They wouldn't come after drinking Saturday. They ain't going to come. And even though they come, they will hang, hang out. So I, I went to the village and I asked for two guys. I don't know who, I don't know what. But as I leave it in God and I say, Father, help me, please. I went and I asked. I know a guy used to work with me, so I asked about the guy. They told me he does be around there every evening. So I said, tell him I say I want to see him. The guy came this Saturday morning with his brother and said, I know his work, but I walk in, so I brought my brother. I said, man, I got some work to do with Calvary. He said, yes. They went with me very early. I had to run in town to get some lettuce plant. So I told my son, Drop those guys at the spot. Told them where I pull out the dashi. Pull off all the slip and, and, and range go down. He didn't give them the message right. He didn't show them where the hoe is. And the guys them say they stand up, they waiting. And one of them say, man, la move the banana by the way. And there was the two ho. There was the two ho right there. And the other guy say, man, la range the place. Because when Brother Black comes on, go hot. When I reach that, all the, all the, those guys are almost done. A big piece of place, you know. Those guys are almost done. Range down the place. Fuck it out. And leave me there now. And I, I got to plant it off. And God sent some rain last night. That's the God we serve. People, young people, hook up to God. God show me Friday evening. He say, watch. I give my people peace. I give my people peace. The peace that pours it all understanding. It doesn't carry stress. It doesn't carry anxiety. It doesn't carry burden. He said, I give my people peace. And the devil know how powerful if they walk in my peace, what will happen? So he brings stress. He brings confusion. He brings all kind of thing in the home to eliminate that peace. And it brings sickness. It brings anxiety. It brings... The reason why the sister came here and testified we don't see that for long is God want this to go out to us. He want this. And, and when we do that, man, we will walk in such a love for God. Your crave would be for nothing else but God. Your desire would be for nothing else but God because he gave us the best gift. And one of the things that he says, value, value his work. Value when pastor preach. Value 
a Sunday school, if you could teach Sunday school, come in and teach. If you could be a son, come and say, Pastor, I would like to do that. Come and let we make the things of God look bright, no man. Let we look like people who know God. When we walk down the road, people will say, wait, where them they come from? Then drop from Mars and new type of people. Come on, man, let me spice up the thing now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God is good. So come, let me lift up Jesus. Take out your offering, no matter what you have. And let's give. Let's give unto our God, the one who is man. He, he doing all the good things. <laughs> Amen. Come, let me lift up Jesus. It's 
Jesus way, the only way. It's Jesus way, the only way. It's Jesus way. Come on, give God some praise. Give God some praise. There is no other name given among men by which we shall be saved but the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. At this time, we will have our brother Adrian Constance to do our intercessory prayer for the soul winning crusade, Sugar Carter. Yes, good morning, church. Romans 10 and verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? And the scripture goes on to say, How beautiful is the feet of them that brings good tidings. So, as we're about to pray, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Father God, that you are sovereign and that you have risen from the dead. As you would have risen from the dead, Lord, you have power over the grave. You have power over sin. You have power over death. So, Father God, I pray, O oh Lord, that as this crusade is about to begin, Lord God, that those, that person's ears will be open to hear your word. Oh, Father God, I pray the scales over their eyes will fall in Jesus' mighty name right now, oh Lord God, that their hearts will, be, will begin to turn, oh Father God, and, and to become softened to receive your word, Lord God, that as we speak, as we encourage, Father God, as testimonies go forth, as items, oh Father God, are, are being done, that hearts, oh Lord God, will become receptive to your word. Lord, your word says that the harvest is ready and plentiful, but the laborers, they are few, oh Lord God. So, Father, as we go out, Lord, you also told the disciples to pray to the Lord of the harvest, the oh Lord God, that laborers will be provided and laborers will go forth, oh Lord. So, God, I pray that souls will be one. I pray, oh Father God, that as, as the minister comes, oh God, that you'll guide him, oh God. Guide him as the word to, to share, oh Lord God. Your word will not return unto you void. Place within his heart things that need to be said, things that need to be expounded upon, Father God. We know that you are in control. We know that all things are unto you, Father God, because you created everything. God, we come against the adversary. We come against his plans, oh Father God, to attack and to counter attack and to bring about distractions and anything that is not of you, Lord God. I lift up those who are struggling, God, who wants to serve you, but God, they're in a in a bind, oh Father God, back and forth, oh God, lukewarm, oh Father God, Lord, persons who know the right, but they're choosing to do wrong, God, I pray for conviction in the name of Jesus, those who would have grown up, oh God, to hear the gospel, Lord God, that today be the day, God, that they commit their lives fully unto you in the name of Jesus, Father God, black backslidden men and women, God, come back to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we call them forth, oh Father God. Now is not the time to play games, oh Lord God. Now is not the time to play church, oh Father God. Lord, we pray for committed hearts, Father, who would say that you are their sovereign Lord in Jesus' mighty name. God, that conviction will grip hearts, oh God. Lord, that they will return, God. They will repent, oh Father God. They will turn from their wicked ways, oh Father God. Lord, they will turn down their idols, burn their idols, Father God, and walk to you, Lord God, not having anything behind there to go back to God. Lord, we pray for commitment, God. Pray for commitment, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, and we give you all the praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, you may have your seats, please. And um, it is my honor and privilege to pleasure to welcome our brother Otto Essian. Good morning, good morning. God is good and all the time. It's indeed a privilege and an honor to be here this morning. My first time on a Sunday. The last time I came, it was on a funeral. So with this 
atmosphere here this morning. I feel like I should come again. <laughs> I love to be where the people of God are there and they are not in a hurry. So you worship God and you praise God. Nobody's checking time. Everybody's worshiping together. So two years ago, I, I worked on an album and I wrote a song, a reggae song, and then I was thinking in my spirit, who should I feature on this song? And then it just dropped on my spirit. It said, call Fenton, call Fenton. So I called Fenton and I said, Fenton, I have a song and I would like you to sing it with me. And he said, sure, bro, bring it on. And there and then I sent him the chorus. He sent back some verses. I'm like, just so. <laughs> And then we practiced and practiced and we recorded in 2022 at my church down at KBC, Kingston Baptist Church. And over a period of two years, we were able to mix and master the song. So for this morning, we would like to encourage anybody who loves God, never ever be ashamed of the name Jesus. Amen. We live in a time where people are out there, they do what they want to do. They are not ashamed to jump on the street. But we now as believers should not be ashamed to clap and dance and shout for Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the sweetest name you will ever hear. So we need you to sing the chorus with us. Is that alright? The chorus simply says, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. How many of you heard the song already? Blessings, blessings. Alright. It's just like this. I search to the Bible. No other name so sweet like the name of Jesus. That's your part right there. You know that is the only name. The name that can save. Everybody say. Jesus is the yeah, yeah. Chorus says, Jesus. 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 There's nobody greater. No other name so sweet. Yes. All right, friends, I'll let you He's the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. And he's a friend of the friendless, and he's always there. Say, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, we can to let you know. No, 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 no. Jesus, Jesus, what you're saying now, yeah, yeah. Jesus, the, the sweetest thing I know. Listen, I've been to many places and I've seen so many faces. But there's only one name, Jesus. It's the sweetest name I know. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Because he's always there. Always there. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Jesus. Jesus. What a name. Jesus. We came to let them know there's nobody greater. No other name so sweet, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. What you say, yeah, yeah. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Jesus. Oh yeah. Jesus. There's nobody greater. There's nobody greater. No, 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 no. 
Can you wave your hands with us? Come on, say Jesus. Jesus, it's the sweetest name I know. Help us right here. After me. Say J E S U S. J E S U S. Say J E S U S. Let me hear you. Say J E S U S. Jesus is the sweet. Y'all got it? Your turn. Oh, and we say Jesus. 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 Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Oh, yeah. I sing Jesus. 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 The sweetest name I know. One more time, say. I used to say J E S U S. J E S U S. Let me hear ya. Say J E S U S. J E S U S. Let me say J E S U S. J E S. Jesus is the sweetest right there. It's the sweetest name. Jesus is the sweetest name. You show that he's your sweetest name. Jesus is the sweetest name. I know. He's the lily of the valley. Jesus is the sweetest name. I know. And he's the rose of Sharon. Because it's sweeter than milk and honey. Yeah, do it again. I say it's sweeter than milk and honey. Sweeter than ketchup, y'all. Sing it for us. Say Jesus, say the sweetest. Y'all sound good. One more time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise God. He is the sweetest name that we know. Do you know that? Tell your neighbor, Jesus is the sweetest name. Because the Bible declares that, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And his mercy is endured forevermore. With Jesus sweet. I said, Jesus, sweet. Jesus is sweet. Sweeter than all we troubles. Sweeter than food that we eat. Because sometimes we eat the food and we're still sad. We're still feeling. But when we had Jesus, man, he's everything. Amen. And as the children prepare to go for children's church, we... We want to allow them to do so along with their teachers um, so the children can leave at this time. And of course, the goodness of God. Today's Resurrection Sunday. And as we reflect today, let us prepare our hearts to hear from the man of God, our bishop. Who will bring the word this morning. Come on, you could do better than that. So that, that appreciation was for the person who come in to read the scripture. So after they finish, just soak up your energy. At this time, Sister Leah, come about. She will come to read the scripture reading. Amen. Good morning, church. Heavy Guinness. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus. Oh, sorry. From Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. 
They were talking with each other about everything that ha had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that has happened there in these days? What things, he asked, about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to sentence to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision from angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. But they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish are you and how slow to believe all, all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning from Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened as they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he, was, while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and told there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus recognized was recognized by them when he broke bread with them. It ends the scripture reading. Thank you, Sister Leah. Come on, let's put our hands together for our bishop, Sonny E. Williams. Amen. Thank you so much and good morning, everybody. God is so good. And uh, I want to welcome you all here this morning. And for those of you who were away and you are back, um, people like young Sister Ross, Sister Ross Jr., welcome home. Um, Dr. Nellie Richardson, welcome home. Sister Yvonne Kamabash, welcome. Oh, yes, you're down there. I'm glad to have you back after surgery and all the other things that went along with it. To God be the glory. We continue to pray that what God has started, he will complete. Amen. So let us pray. Father, thank you today for your great love. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we hated you, while we cursed you, while we blasphemed your name, you died for us. Oh, what a love. God, we join with the, the hymn, love so amazing, so divine, demands my life 
and my all. We pray today, Father, that you will speak through me to your people. I pray, Father, that the eyes of my heart will be opened. That you will grant me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. So hold for me again the book of Luke, chapter 24. And I, I should have welcomed Brother, Brother Otto. <laughs> Great talent. And we pray that God will continue to use that album to the glory and honor of Jesus. Good. So, if I'm permitted, permitted or not, I'll take it back. So we want to focus this morning on the two men on that Easter Sunday who were on their journey on the road of Emmaus. And I have entitled the theme for our this course this morning as the story ends, their eyes were opened. Brilliant end of a story. Their eyes were opened. Have you ever been looking for something And you look, you look, you look everywhere and the thing was there staring you. That's an experience of many of us. In fact, I have gone to the extreme where I am looking for the, the keys for my car and looking everywhere and I have it in my hand. That sounds like I am. A frustrating experience, not so? Mm, they're right in front of you, but you can't see it. And sometimes in our spiritual walk and experience, sometimes we can be looking for God's presence and it seems like we can't find it. This was the experience of the disciples on the first, on the resurrection day. They looked for Jesus. These two men. And Jesus was in their company. He walked with them. The record says, that the two friends were walking home from Jerusalem. No doubt they had gone to the Passover. And they are now going to their village called Emmaus. A seven miles journey. And I'm not to show at what point Jesus joined them. But it must have been a good distance because the scripture said Jesus taught them and he began in the Old Testament and worked his way through the law and the prophets as he tried to show them about this Jesus. The story begun 
in verse 16 says it. The story begins, their eyes were kept from recognizing him. The English Standard Version says, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. The New Living Translation says, but God kept them from recognizing him. But God. God, as it were, blinded their eyes. And to make the point a bit stronger this morning, because the original, the Greek, literally says their eyes were kept from recognizing him. So in no way they could have recognized Jesus even though Jesus was walking and talking and teaching them. Their eyes were kept. It was like the literal rendering of the Greek would be. It is like you're walking with your dog on a leash. And the dog sees somebody's foul then the dog will go at that foul. But you restrain your dog and your dog couldn't eat the people's foul. It says they couldn't see Jesus because God restrained their eyes. And so the question would be, why? Why would God, as it were, blinded their eyes that they can't see Jesus? But the facts are there. The woman went to the tomb. And the woman came back with the story that he's not there. He's risen. What it says there in Luke 24, they said that the woman's story were a Nancy story, were fable. They said fable. And you see, it was traditionally, it was how women were regarded. Because the Jewish rabbi did not, a woman was not allowed to testify in court. Their testimony was not admissible. It was not reliable. Thought I would hear some women saying, praise God. So, why would, therefore, based on the tradition that women, their testimony, carry no weight, why, therefore, will God allow the woman to have been the first to come back with the story that he's risen? The way God does his business is amazing. Now, if you wanted, if 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 this, if you wanted to trump up, trump up a story, obviously you will get some men. You'll get some men because the words of men were acceptable, not women. The woman came. So they had the they had the evidence from the woman. And Peter, 
When the woman shared their story, Peter ran to the, to the, the grave, Sepulchre. And the story say, he's not there. He's risen. The tomb is empty. But these are two disciples. And they are going home. Troubled. Troubled because their master is missing. And Jesus. came and walked with them. And they couldn't recognize him because blinded their eyes. You see, it is, it, is, it is a fact that we are trying to establish in this church. If you were here in Christmas, Christmas morning, it was Something that I picked from the Christmas story that I am seeing also in the story of the resurrection. You see, God hides his truth from those who have no intention to obey. I repeat, God hides his truth from those who have no intent on obeying him in the first place. So that is why we could come to the same place, the same house, the same church. We listen to the same preacher. But some of us get the truth and the rest of us don't have a clue. Perhaps it is the same experience like these, these two men. God blinded their eyes that he was right next to them, walking with them, and they couldn't see him. You see, quickly, John 11 and 17 New International Version says, if anyone chooses to do God's will, he will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak of my own. It begins with an intent to do what? To obey. To obey. Look how Jesus, Jesus praised God for deliberately hiding kingdom secrets from people who have no intention to obey. They hear, but they don't, they will not obey. So this is what Jesus said in Luke 10 and 21. He says, I praise you, Father. Lord of heaven and earth because you have hidden these things from the wise and learn and reveal them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is your good pleasure. It is God's good pleasure to throw blindness on people. And at the first at the first, when he was resurrected, those two men on the road to, the, to Emmaus were struck blind. They couldn't see Jesus. It's the kingdom secrets. It, can't, it, it cannot be penetrated by your intellect. Or else some right, some scholars of the day would be the people who understand. But listen to me. I am, I am talking to you as somebody who has spent the better part of my life in that book. You understand what I'm saying? And I've had formal training. 
And sometimes I'm amazed at what I hear some simple, simple people unravel truth. You stand flabbergasted by some simple, uneducated people who open their mouths and they could give you some deep truth of the Bible. Why? Because revelation comes from who? Not your intellect. It comes from God. It comes from the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can blind your eyes. That you hear and you can't, you can't understand. And that's what Jesus said. Luke, Luke 8 and 10 he said. He said the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God. Have been given to you. But to others. I speak in parable. So that through seeing. They may not see. And through hearing, they may not understand. That's a sobering truth. Very, very sobering truth. The story for these guys, the story of Easter started with their eyes were blinded by God. So you would think, we will think that all God does is open eyes. Yes, he wants to open eyes. But if you don't want to hear, if you don't want to obey, you will be blinded to spiritual matters. Perhaps, maybe, maybe that's what is happening in many of our churches today. If you amazed. How can you see that? How can you understand that? Their eyes were restrained. They couldn't see Jesus. But quickly, I am I am, I am going from the, the story begins, and I want to get to the story ends. So, I then have to connect you between how the story started and how it will end. And it says there in verse 30 and 31, and I am, I am contending about the table. The table all are welcome. And Luke there, Luke said, as they journeyed on the road to Emmaus, the two disciples said to the, to the stranger, because to them, this is a stranger. So they said, and given that Jewish, the Jewish people then were given to hospitality. Strangers were always welcome and always given hospitality. So they asked this stranger, could you share a meal with us? Could you stay by and have a meal with us. And it says. When he was at the table. With them. He broke bread. And blessed. And. He took the bread. And blessed. And broke it. And gave to them. And their eyes. Were opened. And they recognize him. But let's see if we could understand this. Because if this is. If this was the thing that opened their blinded eyes. Then I really, really want to, to understand what is happening here. Because it is in, 
It is in sharing the meal. Their eyes were open. That's what the word says. But you notice, first of all, there is a switch in the role. For these two men, when the whole idea of the meal started, these two men were the hosts. They invited Jesus to a meal. But we notice that during, as they sat at the meal, roles switched. And it is Jesus now who is playing the role as the host. It says, he took bread. It is his bread. It is now his meal. And he broke bread with them. But you notice that the language of this breaking of the bread is very, very similar or the same to the meal that he had with them that Luke recorded in Luke 22 and 19. It says there, when he had then he took a loaf and when he had given thanks, that is blessed it, he broke it and gave to them. This was at the Passover, Luke 22. The same pattern. Jesus took, he took, he blessed, he broke and he gave. And believe it, it was the same, same pattern that Jesus shows us when he fed uh, the 5,000 in Luke 9. Same thing. He took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave. What, what wonderful, rich symbolism that we have here. In, in this word, he takes, he blesses, he breaks, and he gives. All in a meal. All in a meal. And I am, I am playing around the meal. They were having a meal with him. A meal. And I'm trying to switch our mind and bring our mind if we were walking with Jesus, what a meal meant. Meal don't mean a whole lot these days. Mean, meal would mean you're hungry and a man give you a piece of food. You understand? Man I always beg you, man. Beg your money for food. Give me a piece of food. It don't mean nothing. You understand what I'm saying? Meal in our culture could mean nothing but you have food, me hungry, you give me. That's it. Mm -mm, not, not, not in Jesus' time. Sharing of a meal. Listen to me. Jesus was always, it, it looked like, that's why the Pharisees call him, you gluttonous, you wine bibber. Jesus was always at a meal. Thank God. Thank God maybe then they have no diabetes, no hypertension. But that's, that's against the point. But we notice that all the meals, remember the meals, the meals he had with what? Tax collectors, prostitutes, sinners, and Pharisees. Everybody was invited to come. Come to the meal. Come to the meal. And we remember, we remember in, in Luke chapter 14, when he issued that invitation to 
to go invite people to this meal. And at the evening, very few people came. Then he gave the instruction to say, go invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind to the table. Bring them. Go into the roads and the lanes and compel them to come. And I love the message. And this is how the message puts Luke chapter 14 and 12 to 14. It says, then he turned to the host and he said, the next time you put on a dinner, don't just invite your friends and families and rich neighbors. The kind of people who will return the favor. Invite some people who never get invited out. The misfits from the wrong side of the tracks. You'll be and experience a blessing. They won't be able to return the favor. But the favor will be returned. Oh, how it will be returned at the resurrection of God's people. So Jesus was saying, listen to me. In a culture that is given to hospitality, Jesus is saying, but your guest list, your guest list raising questions. You're only inviting people, your big name people, big names, so that you could have some kind of fame and something return. Jesus was saying, when you invite them, you must tell them, just wash them foot and come. There is no restriction at my table. No restriction at my table. Just wash your foot and come. In fact, the list that Jesus provided is people who we don't invite to our tables. Who are invited to the sandals opening? You? <laughs> Which one of you were invited to, to, to what, what, the, what that organization that they had the test run up? CELAC. Which one of you were invited to CELAC? <laughs> Which one of you, when sandals was open, were you invited? Well, not that I, we have any problem. Everybody can be invited. Sandal opening was not a wash your foot and come. That's the point I'm making. You have to have some attachment. Because the opening of sandal is about business. About business. What kind of business you could provide for sandal? I hope you're saving some money to go into those, the bungalows that has glass bottom looking down at the sea. Oh, you could imagine. <laughs> it was not a wash your foot and come. No, 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 no. This was, this was, his, this was the who is who. The who is who were invited there. And because they didn't have room, the list was very selective. Because even very important people couldn't be there. At Jesus' table, all are invited to come. You see, the religious, the religious people, 
had, that was essentially the problem that they had with Jesus. Because to them, they were about separating. It was about separation. But it was Jesus who said, I didn't come to call no Pentecostal people. I didn't call, come to call no righteous people. I come for sinners, man. Amen. Amen. I've come to call sinners. The worst sinners. There is an open invitation to you. Wash your foot and come. And Jesus broke bread. Jesus broke bread. And the same God who blinded their eyes was the same God who now opened their eyes and they said, God, Jesus was with us. And the reason, and the reason, but after all, didn't our hearts burn as he broke the word of God? What meals? speaks about there is a certain amount of intimacy with the meal there's a certain amount of acceptance that he invites us not we invite ourselves it's all about grace you get the problem. The thing is about grace. You don't deserve his table. You could never be. You could never ever work up the kind of righteousness for an invitation. But he invites us to come. It's about grace. And their eyes were open. Eyes pop open. Because grace, through a meal that they saw Jesus, in the same manner, it was his, it was his usual demonstration of life when he took bread. Blessed it, broke it, and gave. My walk with God is a walk of grace, you know. Walk of grace. If you don't believe that, this is about grace. You see, the longer you are in the church, you believe that you have earned your place. The longer we've served God, we think that we have earned it because we do this, this, this. What about what you don't do? What about the things that you don't do? Why? Because you are blinded to them. There are lots of us who are blinded to some real serious truth. Some serious deep truth. And Jesus said, to, about the Pharisees. He said, You're, you guys are so scrupulous. You're so scrupulous that you, you even tied the, your, your tree, your mint tree. You could imagine. You go and you count up your mint tree and you say 10% of this mint belongs to God. And Jesus said, this is what you should, you ought to have been doing. But the weightier matters. Jesus said, some of you rip off the poor. Rip off old people. Robbers! Cheaters! Involved in all kinds of unrighteousness. Your matters. The 
which it was at the tip. It was at the tip of that the eyes were opened. And I pray this morning, this morning, Sunday, and every Sunday is resurrection day, hear me? This morning of resurrection, that as, as, we, as we are invited, no matter who you are, no matter what you have done, no matter what you have been and who you are right now and what you will be, there is an invitation to say, come to the table. All, all are accepted. What grace, <laughs> what grace. This is amazing grace. not the in or the out. It is about grace. The eyes were open. I love a little review of the, of the movie Antoine Fisher. And some of you <laughs> may have viewed it. Antoine Fisher. And the story opens. Antoine, an African American young man who is serving in the Navy, asleep on his bunk, and he is dreaming that he is a little boy standing outside a huge barn. As he approaches, the doors open. And a man reaches out his hand to escort him to a wonderful feast. Those present at the banquet spanned history. Antoine is the guest of honor. His mother sets before him a big plate of pancakes. Just as he is about to plunge into the pancake, he wakes up. Antoine was born in prison. His father was killed before he was born. And he was placed in an orphanage until his mother could come and get him. His mother never came. He lived a painful childhood. His foster mother beat him and verbally abused him. The daughter in the home sexually molested him when he was six. Because of his volatile temper. It landed him in one fight after another. And he was sent by the naval authorities to the naval psychiatrist. Dr. Devon Port, played by Denzel Washington. The story moves back and forth from the present to his childhood as Dr. Devon Port helps him confront his painful past. Antoine finally decides to follow the doctor's advice to look for his family. His girlfriend accompanies him. He locates an aunt who helps him find his mother. A relative introduces him. His mother tears up and withdraws. She says nothing. There is little expression. Antoine talks about how he used to dream of her and wonder if she missed him. His mother is not able to respond. When he finishes speaking, he bends over, kisses her on the cheek, still no response. He gets up, leaves. And after he's gone, she tears well up in his mother's eyes as she folds 
her, ha her head in her hands. Her life is broken. She cannot, at least at this moment, accept his offer of love and forgiveness. When Antoine gets back to his auntie's house, he discovers a full house of relatives. A man greets him with a smile and identifies himself as Uncle Horeb. Another, I am cousin Janetta. Another, I am your aunt Anna. He discovers family and belonging. And then he's led uh, to some doors that open up into the dining room. Two small boys open the doors and there is a table set with all kinds of food, even pancakes. The matriarch of the family reaches out her hand and take his hand in hers. And as she prepares herself to speak, she takes one hand and puts it on Antoine's face and then the other. With grace filled her eyes, she says, welcome. Then the feast begins. What a beautiful symbolism of the table of the Lord. All are welcome. Even the two doubting disciples are welcome. Even you are welcome at the table. You are welcome. That's what Easter is about. You are welcome. You are welcome. Bring your faults, bring your doubts, bring your sins. Their eyes were open and they saw Jesus. What a way for a story to end. I can see clearly now. Amen. I, I can't see the rain has gone. <laughs> you can see clearly now because the Holy Spirit has opened my eyes and I can see now that there is more grace and grace and grace for all. Others will remember your past. There are some people who will never, ever forget my past. I remember when my daughter were at community college, well, at least one of them, a teacher who grew up with me, told her who was real Sonny Williams. Jesus. <laughs> That's the Sonny. That was crucified. Because the table. The table. 50 something years ago. Welcome me. Welcome me. With all my history. My history. They are gone. Because Jesus. Paid it all. Paid it all. Paid it all. Eyes were open. It begins, my brothers and sisters, it begins when you embrace grace. But if until Jesus comes that you're just hearing and don't want grace and don't want to obey, God will close your eyes. God will close your eyes. And no matter what sermon we preach, no matter how dynamic you are, 
no matter how hands are laid on you and you are slain, your eyes will be closed. You will not see. Pray that you will find the grace that these two found. As he broke bread. You know this, this table, this table speaks of communion. Not in the symbolism that we talk, but real, the real, the meaning behind the communion. It speaks of this kind of relationship that we have with Jesus. Listen, it is at that kind of relationship that your eyes begin to open. It is when you begin to accept grace and you wonder, oh my God, I used to do that. I used to live like that. I used to say that. Why? Because grace has opened up your heart. Grace has opened up your eyes. You see, the more, the more communion you and I have, is the more them eyes say going to be open, you know. It's that we're going to see the mysteries of the kingdom. I'm saying, I'm saying there are, there are stuff. And, and I, love, I love the testimonies that were there because people were saying, hey, you don't know what you're missing because your eyes blind. Eyes blind to certain principles of the kingdom. That God has opened. It's at the table. It's at this communion. It's as, as we build intimacy with God. Eyes. <laughs> you think you have revelation? Get close to the one at the table. Get close to the host. The host that invites us to the table and breaking bread, man. And the host that, listen, as you commune with him, revelation becomes very progressive. So I am looking back over my life. And as you look back, there are things that you couldn't see. You couldn't see. You couldn't, and, and now you wonder how I didn't see that. How I couldn't see that. You couldn't see that because you're blind. It's at this table. As we maintain this table. Communion at this table. The full progressive revelation of Jesus. Will be seen. Let us pray. God, we want to see you. We want to see you. Open our eyes, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. see Jesus you know as we do this song the host who is Jesus invites persons to the table whoever you are whatever you are there is this call to come to come open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, open the eyes of my heart, Lord.
of Jesus in his life. I want to see you. God, that which you have started in his life as a, as a child. God, we, we ask you, God, that this revelation is going to bloom. Bloom in the name of Jesus Christ. God, now in his adolescence, thank you for doing it, oh God. We pray your blessings upon him, O oh God. Thank you for your wisdom. Wisdom, God. We pray for that, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, you're going to, you're going to be able to direct him, God, into the areas that will matter for him in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for doing it, O oh God. God, we pray of your covering over your son. 
in the name of Jesus. God, we pray today, God. Help him to stand. Amidst all the trials. Amidst provocation. Help him to stand. In the name of Jesus. Like the tree planted by the rivers of water. That you will stand in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we pray for the ability to stand in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, you are able to do that. Thank you for your strength, oh God. God, when all is said and done, he will stand. In the name of Jesus. That your power is able to keep us regardless. And I thank you for doing it now, Lord Jesus. I pray your blessings upon him, God. Touch his body. We ask God for your healing touch in the name of Jesus. Praise be to God. Lord God, we pray for... Young Daniel, in the name of Jesus. God, you're making it clearer. You're making it clearer for her, Lord God. Clear revelation. We pray for that clear revelation, God, for the way ahead for your life. To see Jesus. You know that verse in the book of the book of Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not unto your own understanding in all, A-L-L, -L, all your ways to acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. God, you're going to direct her Along this path, God. All the questions that she has. God, we pray for direction now. Along this path in the name of Jesus Christ. Clear thinking, God. God, the thinking of yesterday. They are gone. Gone forever. And you are giving her, Lord God, new destination. New way of thinking. New guide, oh Lord Jesus. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Could I invite everybody to stand now? I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord.
certain way things have changed for you they have changed others are wrong you don't know the change that have happened in you they think that you are the same they think so and they are going to be a new thinking God is going to God is going to show you a new way. And you see the same thing I, I, I told your sister, the, the, the taller one, the tallest one of the three. You're going to bloom again. You're going to bloom again. Hey, mother over there. Your dream ain't over for them girls eh? Not over. There is, a, there is a visitation on your house. That these girls are going to go in a different path. A different path. Follow. Listen. God is going to open your eyes. To the way you will go. Follow it. Don't make nobody convince you otherwise. Follow it. Follow it wholeheartedly. He said, I will plan your life for you. You're going to get step by step. Of how you're going to work yourself. Out of this. You're going to bloom again. You're going to bloom. And just. Before we do, do the benediction or the announcement too. <laughs> the difficult when I'm on a roll, I just don't service. Eh? Please, who will do the announcement? Or oh, starry, yes. Get ready, starry, to do the announcement. Stay right where you are. If you keep standing, they're going to be shot. Come starry. Good morning, church. Please listen to the announcements. Um, outdoor Sunday school. The Belair Outdoor Sunday school will meet this afternoon from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock p.m. at the Plato's residence in Belair. Beginning this evening at 7 p.m., the church will meet on Zoom for prayer for our upcoming or reaching top Belair. We'll meet Tuesday to Friday this week. The link will be sent to the church's WhatsApp group. Please note that no department will meet during this period. SVG Gospel Fest 2024. Digicel's SVG Gospel Fest 2024 will open this evening at the Russell's Auditorium at 6 o'clock p.m. Under the theme, A Glorious Celebration of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. It will feature local gospel artists, including our own brother Adrian Constance. The admission is $10. Paui Christian Education Easter Extravaganza 2024. Paui SVG District CED Easter Extravaganza will be held tomorrow, April 1st, 2024, at the Salt Rivers Plainfield from 9 o'clock a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. 
these, there will be competitive races, fun and fellowship. All are invited and encouraged to rep their color. Glad Tidings will be wearing green. For those who are in need of transportation, the Finley's van will be transporting persons. The van will leave at 8 a.m. sharp. Outreach 2024. Please note that the church will be having three nights of open air meeting from April 7 to 9, 2024. These meetings will be held at Sugar Corner Junction in Belay. I will commence at 7 p.m. nightly. Sunday, April 28, 2024 is Students Recognition Day. Uh, please note that this year's Students Recognition Day will be held on Sunday, April 28, 2024. Students are asked to wear their uniforms to church. The service will be brought live on NBC Radio 705 at 9 a.m. Please be seated by 8.45 a.m. These are all the announcements.